This is section 11.6, part 2. Um, I just now noticed today for the first time that the notes, for whatever reason, uh, at the top say 10.6 on these slides, which is silly. I'm not sure why it does that. I never noticed that until today, but oh well. Uh, not that big of a deal, I suppose. Um, as I was saying in the last segment, um, some graphs, like that rose curve, you would have never seen in a set of equations using rectangular coordinates x and y. So some of these graphs you only really want to graph with um, polar graphing in mind. Okay, so for this one, um, let's see, what do I want to do here? I think what I'm going to do is instead of using the y and x version of this, this time I think I'm actually going to make a table of values. And um, to get those values, I'm going to solve for r by taking the square root of both sides. Don't forget to put in the plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. So, if I pick some angles like 0 degrees, um, you could do this on your calculator. I'm just going to report the answers. You'll get plus or minus 1. If you use 30 degrees, you'll get plus or minus something that's really close to 0.7. But these are rounded numbers because the, to the nearest tenth is about as accurate as I can graph on these grids anyway. 45 degrees, 0. Um, one thing I do want to say is that um, the cosine of 2 theta graph inherently, so let me graph y equals cosine of 2x just to kind of remind you of what that looks like so that what I'm about to say makes sense. The period is uh, 2 pi divided by that 2 that's in front of the x. The period is pi. And so if we divide the period by 4, that's marks every pi over 4. So that's pi over 4. Let's make that 1 and that negative 1. I'll graph just a little bit of this. It'll become clear. Oh, um, <laughs> Well, I'm using pi over 4. Remember, that's 45 degrees. Okay, sorry. My mind is always on radians, uh, so <laughs> excuse that. So the cosine of 0 is um, 1. And then the next mark is a middle, low, middle, high, middle, low, etc. And because when we solve, well, actually even before we solve, r squared is equal to the cosine answer. And that means that that answer can only be positive because r squared, well, or equal to zero, inherently only gives you non-negative results. So anytime the, the graph of cosine of 2 theta is negative, that means you're going to be taking the square root here of a negative number. You're not going to get any real answers. And so for all of these parts of the graph here that are below the x-axis, you won't have any ordered pairs show up. So if you put in any number like uh, pi over 2, uh, 90 degrees, there's no value. Because cosine of 2 times 90 degrees I'm making sure I'm doing I'm thinking that right um, 9 degrees times 2 is 180 cosine of 180 is negative 1 the square root of negative 1 is not real okay so um, the next time you're going to have answers again 
is at 1, 2, 3 pi over 4, which is 135 degrees. And that's going to be 0. And then 150 degrees, which is good because that's where we're above the x-axis on this graph down here. We're, we're you know, above. So the square root of a positive thing does give us an answer, and that's going to be plus or minus 0.7. And then 180 degrees, we're going to get plus or minus 1. Okay, so let's graph this guy. Um, make one fairly large here so it can be seen because if you notice uh, all of our answers are between negative one and one so uh, we're not going to have a whole bunch of graph and beyond the one circle all right zero degrees right here the answer is one or negative one plotted both of them. At 30 degrees, which is about right here, the answer is about 0.7. So let's say that's about right here and negative 0.7, which of course is in the fourth quadrant. Um, then at 45 degrees, which is right here, we're to zero. And so what happens in between is we get this and we get this. Okay. Then we're starting to dip below the x-axis down here at 45 degrees. Right there is when we start to dip below. So graph nothing, graph nothing, graph nothing, graph nothing, until you get to 135 degrees, which is right here. And you graph 0, which is at the pole. Then 150 degrees, which is right here, we're going to graph 0.7. Let's say that's about right there. And negative 0.7, which is about right there. And at 180 degrees, which is right here, we're graphing 1, which is that point we already graphed, and negative 1, that point we already graphed. And so it ends up looking like this. Kind of a figure 8 looking shape. That shape is called a limniscate. Um, I hope that you see um, in my notes or in the book or something um, good versions of the drawings of these. Um, mine are just sketches, so they're obviously not perfect. So um, hopefully you're getting something out of the sketching, but don't rely on the shape looking perfect here. So make sure you look at some good pictures. We already did the spiral earlier. It was r equals theta. And so I'm going to skip that next one because it just is going to be uh, doubling the angle and it's going to look the same uh, basically so uh, it'll just go out faster than that the one we had ah yes so in the next page of notes there's a page where you have different uh, equations and what those look like the uh, r equals a cosine theta and r equals a sine theta remember we talked about those last time for for those the center of the circle is on the uh, axis that's related to the trig function. So since cosine is related to x, its center is on the x-axis. And since sine is related to y, its center is on the y-axis. The pole is one of the points of that curve. The diameter of that curve is a. And the, uh, yeah, the diameter is a. Okay. And then there are equations of the limniscates. And a good picture, uh, the one on the right is the one that should be close to what we just drew. Then there are several different kinds of limousol. Um, there's the one with the inner loop, the cardioid, uh, the dimpled limousol, and the convex limousol. And you can predict those from those equations if you know what the ratio A over B is equal to. I'm not going to ask that you memorize those because you can graph the Y equals F of X graph and produce those points as we did. And then there are the rose curves.
Okay. Now, the next part, um, converting a polar equation to a rectangular equation. So let's start with this one. R equals 4 over 1 plus sine of theta. So we're supposed to convert this to a rectangular equation and graph the polar equation for uh, theta between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So um, I'm going to first of all get rid of the uh, fraction in this problem. And I'm going to do so by multiplying both sides of the equation by 1 plus sine of theta. On the left side, that introduces a new thing, 1 plus sine of theta. On the right, 1 plus sine of theta cancels with the 1 in the denominator, leaving 4. Okay. Then um, you can um, distribute that r, and you'll get r plus r sine theta. Then, um, since r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, I could replace r with the square root of x squared plus y squared. And r sine theta is y. Okay. And move this down a little bit. Um, then, as you learned in um, college algebra, I assume, as when you learned it, to um, solve a radical equation, you get the radical expression by itself. So I'm going to subtract y from both sides and then raise both sides of the equation to a power that gets rid of the radical. So since it's a square root radical, I'm going to square both sides, which gives me the radicand, the thing under the radical, on the left side. And squaring the right side gives me 16 minus 8y plus y squared. What I'm doing, of course, is 4 minus y quantity squared for that right-hand side. Then, um, I see y squared. Uh, actually, I want to get all the variables on one side. Uh, so x squared is fine. It's the only x squared in the problem. If I ever subtract y squared from both sides, um, that y squared is going to go away. So I'm going to back up a little bit and, and say this differently. Because that um, y squared disappears, I'm actually going to leave everything on that other side as it is. So all I've done is I've subtracted y squared from both sides. And since there's only x squared and no y squared, we know this is a parabola. And the standard form for a parabola that we're going to need to do um, to graph this more easily, uh, I'm going to write the y term first. So I'm just switching the order. And then the coefficient of y inside of parentheses has to be positive 1 in a parabola that's got x squared in it. So I'm going to factor off the 8, which leaves y minus 2. So this is a parabola. Again, we can tell because there's an x squared but no y squared. Because it's x that's squared, it either opens up or opens down. Um, the vertex of this parabola is at 0, which is what's subtracted from x before it's squared, comma 2, which is what's subtracted from y, and 4c is what we said equal to the number in front of the non-squared variable. In other words, set 4c equal to negative 8. Dividing both sides by 4 gives me negative 2. 
which means that this one, uh, with a C being negative, means it's going to open downward. Okay, so. So um, let me draw out my rectangular system here. Get that all set up correctly. Okay. So the vertex is at zero two. Uh, since it opens downward. Uh, I know that the focus is going to be below the vertex, and the distance from the vertex of the focus is 2, going down 2 because it's negative 2. That's the focus. That's the vertex. Um, the directrix is the other direction, so up 2. There's the directrix. The equation of that directrix is y equals 4. Then um, to get two more points on this curve, um, I'm going to double c, or actually the absolute value of c. So doubling 2 is 4. I'm going to go from the fo focus 4 in a direction parallel to the directrix. So 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4. And left, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the parabola goes from the vertex through that point across from the focus to the left and same thing on the other side through that point on the right. Now that's the rectangular equations graph. I've got to point out here that the restriction on the polar one, which I did not write down, I, I know I said it out loud, but I didn't write it. I'm gonna write it over here, right above the graph. Um, we're supposed to only use theta between zero and two pi. And so that's gonna restrict our graph. It may not be that entire parabola because we're not using all real values for theta that are possible, so we might not get the whole thing. So that's something you've got to be aware of when you're graphing these, is you've got to go back and think about that. So I'm going to think of theta values and produce R values to make sure that I don't get too much. So starting with theta equals zero, sine of zero is zero. I'm, I'm substituting into this equation over here. Sine of zero is zero, one plus zero is one, four divided by one is four. So I get the point what what did I do wrong? Oh wow. I was thinking x's and y's were 0, 4, and that's not a point on this problem, but I've got to be careful. In the polar world, theta is equal zeros over here, and r equals 4 is right there. Whoa, I almost made a big mistake and said I goofed up. Well, I goofed up in my thinking, not my graphing. So, whew. Anyway, that's the first point we're going to graph. Um, I'm going to skip all the way to pi and see what happens there. Um, no, actually I'm gonna put pi over two in because that's an extreme value for sine. Sine of pi over two is um, one. One plus one is two, four divided by two is two. So at pi over two, which is right here, I'm graphing two. And between zero and pi over two, I'm graphing all of this. So what I'm graphing in pink is the uh, correct stuff that's between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, pi. Um, sine of, of uh, pi is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, so that's going to be 4. So at pi, I'm getting 4. Okay. That goes to there. Then, um, 
I'm going to skip to 7 pi over 6 so I can kind of see what's going on here. Um, sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. 1 plus negative 1 half is 1 half. 4 divided by 1 half is 8. So at pi over 6, which is somewhere around here, I'm out away from the pole 8 units. I don't have 8 out here uh, graphed, but let's just say it's out here someplace, which has to be a point on the parabola. So that's taking us at least down to there. Okay, and then um, let's let it be 4 pi over 3. Let me use my calculator to speed this up a bit so, um, so I get good answers. So just give me a second, I'm going to type some stuff in. To my calculator so that I get what I want really fast. Just a second. Okay, so I was about to do 4 pi over 3. That's the one I was going to do. That gives me 29.8. Oh, I didn't write the number for 7 pi over 6. That was 8, right? Yeah, that was 8. Didn't write it there. 4 pi over 3 is about 29.9. So, if you think about it, 4 pi over 3, which is this angle right here, we're way out there someplace. Okay? It's, it's way down there. Um, so, it's getting points on this parabola way out there. Um, yeah, we're going that way further and further and further. Okay. Um, and the reason I was slowing down as I got to 3 pi over 2 is because looking ahead, I know what's going to happen at 3 pi over 2. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 4 divided by 0 is undefined. So when we get to 3 pi over 2, nothing will be graphed. Okay, we get to this angle here, nothing. So for all these angles, like this one and this one, they're just going to get you answers that are further and further out away from the pole. And so that's going to make this graph go this way forever. Okay. Now, uh, let's do, on the other side of 3 pi over 2, let's do... Uh, 7, no, 11 pi over 6, which is about here someplace. Um, uh, I'm going to see sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. 1 plus negative 1 half is 1 half. Blah, 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 that's 8 again. And so we're going to get a point out here. Uh, well, well, I messed that up. Well, anyway, it's going to get a point. Um, out here, so ignore the green graph. That's actually badly drawn. Um, let me erase that because that's just bad looking. It doesn't agree with what we're getting. And of course that's because I freehand drew it instead of relying on good stuff. So just pretend that was there already. Okay. And uh, if I were to pick something a lot closer to 3 pi over 2, like uh, 5 pi over 3, I'm going to type in that in my calculator. That's also 29.9. And of course, there's symmetry there because, of course, the parabola is a symmetric figure. So out here, we're getting an answer that's way down there. And the closer we get to 3 pi over 2 from this side, getting numbers closer and closer to it, um, this parabola is going to take off and keep going out and out and out. 
and down, 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 like that. Okay, so it actually gave us the entire parabola, interestingly enough. Okay, well that ends this section. I will see you in class.